All right, guys. Well, we're going to be talking about gobos today. What they are, how to create them, and how to apply them. We're going to do that in Arnold, and we're going to do that with Maya. Here we go. Okay, guys. Well, we're in my 2019. We're going to be talking about gobos and how to apply them to this scene uh, using Arnold and Arnold lighting and so forth, right? So we're going to cover a lot of stuff, not just uh, gobo use, but also how to create them. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So we've got a very simple scene here. We've got a floor with a couple of objects. And uh, if I go into uh, my IPR rendering and I click on that, uh, let me just refresh. There you go nothing going on whatsoever no light in our scene right pretty important now um, i want to have arnold materials on my set here because we're going to be using arnold so i'm going to right click and go to assign new material we're going to go into arnold and i'm going to select my default arnold shader there you go right now that's typically very white and that's not my preference so in the attribute editor we're going to go into color tab click on that and then move over to the gray side a little bit all right so now that we have that we still have no light in our scene so let's create some light now many ways you can do that you can go in and go up to uh, create lights and select on the lights or you can go into the rendering tab here and i'm going to select the flashlight which is basically a spotlight now we need a spotlight because that's where we're going to plug in our gobo so when i create the light i got two controls here i got one here and i got one here now, one is the actual spotlight, which is the cone shaped thing, and the other one is an aim manipulator. So I can take this uh, light up and down, and as I move it, it will keep on aiming towards that second control, right? So I'm going to move that in here and move that up a little bit just in front of my object, okay? All right, so how do I know what's, in, uh, what's been lit in the scene right now? couple of ways you can do that. You can hit seven on your keyboard. And as you do that, you will see the light turn on and you can see what's lit. Or you can hit six to go back and you can go to panels and then look through selected. Now, when you do that, you'll be looking through the light towards the scene and you can see that this is now all covered, right? Now, it's not my preference. So we're going to go back to uh, panels and perspective and perspective. And I just prefer to hit seven on my keyboard, okay? All right, so now that we have this light selected, we're gonna hit the, the uh, Control A to open up the attribute editor, and we're gonna go in to the top, and we're gonna look at the settings here. Now, it says that we have a spotlight, which is correct. Uh, we have a color tab here that we can change, so you can go in and turn on red or yellow or green or whatnot, but we're not gonna do that here because it's not gonna render. Why not? Well, we're, well it may be render, but we're gonna be using something else. We're gonna be using Arnold settings here, so we're gonna leave that alone, right? And also the intensity slider here, as you can see, it's uh, working. We're not gonna use that one either because there again, we're gonna be using Arnold, right? So uh, this is all okay. However, these three, cone angle, penumbra angle, and drop off, these are what we're gonna use. So if I use the cone angle and I drag that, you can see that it becomes very wide and illuminates everything, or it becomes a very narrow and specific and just uh, illuminates part of the sphere. Let's do something like this, right? And then as I take the penumbra angle slider, look at the hardness of the shadows. So it kind of brings in a feather, if you will, right? And then finally we have the drop off. How quick does the light drop off? So distance wise, if you know what I mean, right? Let's leave it at this. Okay, so now that we have all that, let's see if this will render. And again, completely black. Like I said, we need Arnold for that, right? So what we need to do next is we need to scrub down and we need to go to the Arnold tab. Now here we have an exposure value and the exposure value is basically the intensity of our light, right? So let's set this to 10 and hit enter. We're going to go to our IPR render and suddenly, there you go, there's our scene, right? So we're going to get in here a bit closer, there's our scene, and you can see that our material is very reflective. Now I'm not a huge fan of that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my material, we're going to go in here and we're going to go and set to the diffuse. 
Okay guys, well it's time for a little sponsor break here and with that I can make any of these videos for you guys so show them some love, right? And you actually might love this one. So if you need 3D models for a lifelike visualization that you're working on, you might want to check out Render People. They offer 3D posed, 3D rigged and even 3D animated people models, right? And they have over 3,000 products right now. They cover uh, models suitable for business, shopping, sports, swimwear, evening wear, outdoor, and even specialty models like doctors, workers, and whatnot, right? So uh, they're high resolution, 8K maps, clean UVs, clean meshes, ready to go in 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, Unreal Engine 4, Unity, Blender, and Rhino. Now, if you guys use the link below, you'll not only help out my channel at no extra cost to you, but you'll also get free models, totally free models that are posed, rigged, and animated. Use your roughness, bump that up. And as we do, the scene becomes less reflective. And then also under specular, we're gonna increase the roughness as well. And it's updated real time. We still have some specularity going on, but we're good, right? Okay, so we have that, that's okay. Let's move this out of the way for a second. And let's see what we got. So uh, we're gonna be plugging in a gobo, right? Uh, we have now actual rendering going on. And uh, for the gobo, we need to go into Photoshop and create one, right? Let's go. Okay guys, well, we're in Photoshop and uh, now it's time to create a gobo. And for that, it would be kind of handy if I explained what a gobo is in the first place, right? Now, let's imagine we have a film set where you want to have a, a shadow of a tree that's standing outside of a window cast a shadow into the room onto all the objects in the room, right? Now, you would need a window and you would need a tree. Let's say you don't have either. Well, what you would do is you would create a filter that simulates that shadow and you would put it in front of your light, right? So that's basically what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna go up to a file and we're gonna do new. And we're gonna set this to 512 by 512, make it nice and square, that's fine. And we're gonna hit create. Now, uh, when it comes to what is casting the actual shadow, uh, anything that's black will cast shadow, anything that's white will not. Now, if this were a window frame, the window frame would be black and the window panes would be white. But in this case, I want the tree to be the one that's casting the shadow. So the tree that I'm gonna bring in has to be black and everything else has to be white, okay? So I'm gonna go in here to uh, place embedded and I found a, a tree right here online and I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna make it a bit bigger and put it in my image like so. Hit enter and I'm gonna hit control plus to get in a bit closer and make sure I'm touching the bottom there. There you go, okay. And once I'm satisfied with that, what I need to do is make sure that my tree is completely black. So with that layer selected, I'm gonna to go to image, adjustments, levels, and we're gonna move that all the way to the right until we have a completely black tree. Okay. Now we have all that, we're gonna select all our layers on the right here. We're gonna right click, go to merge layers, and then we're gonna to go to file, save as, and I did a test here, so I'm just gonna overwrite this guy, tree gobo, save and save. Click okay, and there you go. Time to go back to Maya. Okay, so here we are. Our scene is as before. The only thing we need to do now is take our gobo and plug that in, right? So we're gonna scrub down and we're gonna look for our, uh, let's see, our Arnold, make sure we got our light selected. Yeah, there we go. Our Arnold tab here, we're gonna scrub down and it says here, light filters. Now we're gonna click on add because we wanna add one and the type we wanna add is a gobo and we're gonna click on add. And then for us to tweak these settings, I need to double click on this, right? And what I'm gonna do is just take our IPR render in here so you can see what's going on, right? So I need to double click on that and that will open up this window. Now next to slide map where you have this white color, you have a checkered box that I can select and I can go in and select file. Then I can go in and select this folder and I can go in and look for our tree gobo, which is this guy and click on open. And look what happens to our rendered scene right there, right? Well, that's all there's to it. It's pretty easy. Now you can be really creative with this. You can have uh, all sorts of options like 
uh, window frames like people in front of a window uh, even objects in a room let's say you don't have time to model a certain object in a room but you want to simulate the idea that it's there by casting a shadow you can just uh, you know create a gobo so that's all there's to it guys so if you have any questions as always let me know in the comments thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time bye Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.